My name is Walter Heck. Welcome to Managing Files with Puppet. Uh, in this webinar, I'll uh, uh, explain to you how to manage files with, uh, with Puppet. Uh, and uh, as we go through, we'll see that there are a lot of different, uh, different options. Um, this webinar will take about 30 minutes, 45 minutes, depending on, uh, on how fast we, uh, we go, uh, after which we will have some, uh, some time for, uh, for questions. If you want to follow along with the, with the slides, please use the URL at the bottom of the, uh, of the screen. Uh, we will have the, the slides there available for you to, uh, to view. Um, first, a little bit about uh, me. Um, uh, I'm, my name is Walter Heck. I'm the, uh, the owner and founder of, uh, of Olin Data. Um, we do uh, open source training and consulting. Uh, Currently, uh, a large chunk of our work is uh, is puppet uh, training and consulting. Um, we do a lot of puppet training, official puppet labs training in uh, in Asia and in uh, a large part of Europe. Uh, we also uh, provide Node.js, OpenStack, and Linux Foundation uh, uh, training, and we do uh, MySQL consulting as well. As for myself, I started my career as a software engineer. Uh, progressed into a MySQL DBA and later uh, 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 flowed into a uh, sysadmin uh, position uh, and simultaneously started growing uh, our business, so uh, I'm also an entrepreneur now. What will we uh, be discussing today? This is a, uh, um, a general agenda, It's not we won't follow exactly this, uh, this order, but it will give you an idea. I'll give a short introduction of what Puppet actually is. Um, you should already have basic Puppet uh, skills, uh, otherwise this webinar is going to go over your head, I think, um, but feel free to watch it even if you have no, uh, no Puppet skills at all. Um, after uh, the quick uh, Puppet introduction, we'll uh, look at which modules we can use for managing files. Um, there are a number of different uh, uh, modules available, uh, some built-in uh, Puppet resource types uh, that we can use, and I'll, I'll go through five different options um, just to, uh, to explain what the differences are and when to use which one. Uh, after going through those uh, five options, I'll uh, show you the, the problems and the, the, the challenges with uh, uh, managing a, a, a single file with multiple resource types. Uh, that can be uh, quite conflicting. And then uh, uh, we'll uh, show you a bit more ex advanced example with exported resources and the, uh, the Concat module on how to build an HA proxy uh, uh, software load balancer configuration file uh, with backends coming from all the uh, backend servers dynamically. At the end, there will be uh, time for some uh, some questions as well. First up, what is Puppet and why do we care? Uh, Puppet is configuration management software. It's uh, often part of a, a larger um, DevOps tool chain, but not necessarily uh, limited uh, to just that. It's just really good at configuration management. Um, it scales really well. I've seen it used any, everywhere from uh, uh, installations with uh, one uh, server to 200,000 plus uh, servers uh, in the largest uh, uh, installations. However, for Puppet Enterprise, the uh, uh, average deployment is between three and 600 uh, servers. So that's, uh, that's kind of the sweet spot where, uh, where Puppet is, uh, is being used. Um, one of the strengths of Puppet is that it's multi-platform uh, compatibility, so uh, it works across Windows, Unix, Mac OS, and uh, BSDs uh, on a bunch of uh, operating systems. Uh, um, it's, uh, it's really uh, uh, powerful that way, and especially with file management that becomes interesting as well, um, because we can uh, manage a file in exactly the same syntax no matter what the target operating system is, except for when it's Windows, of course, because the file names are just different there. Um, commercially uh, supported open source, uh, Puppet is, uh, uh, is an open source product, uh, but Puppet Labs has an, uh, uh, a commercial uh, offering, Puppet Enterprise, and uh, Puppet Enterprise is the uh, 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 commercial supported version of uh, pu Puppet Open Source. It uses uh, not only Puppet Open Source, but also a number of other open source uh, projects to combine all of these into a product uh, with a nice uh, uh, graphical user interface and official uh, enterprise support uh, that would uh, uh, lead into a package uh, that's use useful for enterprises. Uh, with Puppet, we, uh, we often use the term infrastructure as code. 
what it means is that once you get to a fully puppetized uh, infrastructure, uh, you would have your whole infrastructure, your whole server infrastructure uh, defined in, uh, in code, and that is a, a very uh, nice place to, uh, to be. In order to get to that place, you'll uh, need to do uh, uh, lots of uh, managing of, uh, of files. So uh, that's what we will uh, be focusing on in the, in the rest of this webinar. First, we'll look at, at, at which options we have, and then we'll, uh, we'll dive into each one of these uh, options. Um, there are five main options. Uh, the, the first one uh, being a dual option. Um, so you can use the file attribute uh, sorry, the, the, the source and content attributes of, uh, of the built-in file uh, resource type uh, in order to, uh, to manage uh, uh, files and, and, and the content of those uh, files. Um, that's the, uh, the simplest way. Uh, then uh, um, we have the, uh, the concat module uh, that we'll look in that allows us to use uh, uh, separate sections and concatenate them together. We have the file line resource type that is located in the standard lib module. Standard lib is a, is a very often used module. Uh, the uh, Puppet Labs any file module, we'll look at that as well quickly uh, because simply because, uh, uh, especially in the Linux world, a lot of uh, config files use the any file uh, format or a, sem a very similar uh, uh, format. And lastly, we'll look at OGS. OGS is kind of the, uh, uh, the Swiss army knife of uh, um, uh, file uh, management uh, it can do really cool things, but it's also quite complicated. So we'll uh, we'll look at that last. The file resource type uh, is a resource type that is uh, part of Core Puppet, uh, and it can be only used to manage uh, files as a whole. Uh, that means that it's great for uh, things like scripts and uh, config files that are fairly simple. Uh, in more uh, complicated uh, situations, we'll be using uh, something else. The file resource type has two uh, uh, different attributes that determine its behavior. Uh, so there is the source attribute and the content attribute. Uh, we'll go bo through both of them uh, in the next uh, in the next few slides. Um, before we go there, though, uh, I wanted to uh, to specifically mention that in 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 large environments, uh, and I'm thinking a thousand nodes plus at the minimum. Uh, sometimes the file serving can become quite heavy for uh, the Puppet Master to handle. So if you're looking to make some performance uh, improvements, then uh, uh, offloading um, file serving to a separate Puppet Master uh, could do uh, uh, wonders for, your, um, for, your, uh, for the speed of your Puppet uh, installation. Um, First up, the file resource type uh, source attribute. Uh, it, it, it supports two different formats, uh, broadly. Uh, we have a format for the, uh, to point to a, a local file on, an, uh, on the agent and one to uh, point to the remote file on the master. Uh, depending on which one of these two options you choose, it opens the, the, the file that the source attribute uh, points to and copies the contents of that file uh, to the contents of the target uh, file, the, the, fi the, the file that the resource points to. Um, it's non-modifiable, so whatever is in that uh, file that the source points to will be copied into the, uh, the target. Uh, that means that there's no flexibility for uh, parameters that need to change from server to server. Um, but it's great for things like uh, scripts and uh, uh, NAD uh, uh, scripts and, and, and those kind of uh, files that don't really need to be unique per uh, machine. An example of the, uh, the, the file resource uh, with the source uh, attribute, as you can see on the left in the top here, uh, we have a, uh, a my module uh, class uh, and that uh, class, my module bar uh, class, and that class has two resources. One is uh, the uh, file resource uh, TMP file 01 and the other one is file 02. If you look at file 01, we see that the source attribute has been set to the uh, uh, puppet colon slash slash uh, syntax um, and the uh, second one has been set to uh, opt local file uh, 02. Uh, here you can see the differences. The first one, the file 01 uh, resource, will load from the puppet master, 
whereas the op local file 02 uh, file will be loaded from the uh, from the puppet agent. Um, one thing I've, I forgot to mention is uh, the, the syntax of the uh, um, uh, remote uh, source attribute. So you can see here uh, in the middle of the screen, you can see uh, the syntax is puppet colon slash slash. The, the puppet colon slash slash points to the um, to the protocol, just like HTTP, HTTP colon slash slash uh, points in HTTP uh, uh, protocol. Um, so puppet colon slash slash is the only supported protocol at the moment. Uh, then uh, you see puppet master between uh, brackets, uh, which means it's optional. Uh, if you want to load your files from a different puppet master than the one that is serving the modules, uh, here you can uh, optionally put the name of that puppet master. Uh, normally that's not uh, recommended though, unless you have a good reason for it. Uh, so normally that would be empty, which means that you'll get the slightly weird syntax of puppet colon slash 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 modules, so triple, uh, triple slash. Modules, uh, uh, the modules word refers uh, to a mount point called uh, modules, which is mounted by uh, by Puppet, and it's a, it's default by default pointing to the module uh, path. Then Apache is the name of the module, and hpd.conf is the name of the file that is inside the the module. Um, going back to the uh, to the example here, uh, at the bottom left uh, of the of the screen, uh, we can see. Uh, that on the master we have a file called my module slash files file 01 that has the content this is a static file and then we have uh, on the agent uh, op local file 02 and it says this is a locally sourced static file then on the right hand side and in, in the right hand column uh, we uh, do a puppet apply where we include the uh, my module bar bar class from the left uh, left hand side and once that is finished we will see that uh, uh, on the agent, there's a local temp uh, file 01, uh, that is the static file that we loaded from the uh, master, and a temp file 02, that is the uh, static file that came from the agent itself. So you can see the difference between what these two, uh, two things uh, do. Then, um, opposite to the source attribute, there is also a content attribute where uh, the source attribute, uh, you point it to a file and Puppet will open that file and copy the contents into the uh, um, source, uh, into the uh, content of the, of the target file. Uh, with the content attribute, uh, the content attribute has a string value normally, and that's whatever that string is will be uh, uh, pointed as the uh, source, the, the contents of the file, uh, of the target file. However, most of the time, uh, put it, setting a, uh, the content of a file to a static string is not that useful. So in 90% of the cases, probably, um, the uh, template function is, uh, is used. The template function is a, is a built-in puppet function that allows you to parse an ERB template and, as and assign the uh, um, uh, result back to, uh, to the result of the template function. Um, as a giant string. That string is then assigned to the content uh, attribute as the uh, content of the, of the tar target file. Um, the ERB uh, um, system is a uh, embedded Ruby is a standard uh, templating uh, system. Uh, standard Ruby uh, templating system. You can see the URL at the bottom uh, of this uh, slide. Uh, where you can read more about it. I, I will not go into it too deep, more than a, a small example here. Um, the file resource uh, has a uh, uh, content attribute that we'll uh, show an example of right now. We have the, uh, at the top of the screen, we see a class, my module foo. We define two local variables, say hello to, uh, we set it to dude, and my name is file03. Um, then we have a file resource tmp uh, slash dollar my name so the the file name will be file 03 we uh, say ensure our file and content we set it to uh, template function the template function then picks a uh, an erb template uh, and parses that and uh, assigns the result to the content attribute um, in the middle of the uh, of the screen we see a cat my module templates polite file.erb that's the uh, the erb template and you can see 
the uh, less than percentage opening tag and the percentage greater than uh, closing tag. Those Only the parts that are between those tags will be parsed by the uh, ERB uh, system. Everything else is just static uh, text. So as you see here, uh, we are uh, calling the variables, the local variables from the my module foo class, as well as the operating system uh, variable. The operating system variable comes from a, a, a factor uh, fact, and the other two variables come from the local variables from the class. Uh, Puppet Labs has made it very easy for us where uh, local variables uh, from a class that is calling a template are available inside uh, the template, as well as all the factor facts. So if we call Puppet Apply on this uh, uh, class, uh, we can then uh, look at the file 03 uh, uh, file and see, hello dude, I'm file 03 on a Ubuntu system, nice to meet you. Um, so you can imagine that this gets very flexible for um, configuration files that have to have variables in them, but they do have a, um, a very static uh, layout. So for instance, a, a good example is uh, Apache virtual hosts. They, uh, the, the virtual host configurations always have the same layout, but the, the, the contents of each virtual host sign vary significantly. So if you look at, for instance, the, uh, um, the Puppet Labs um, Apache module, you will see uh, heavy use of ERB templates in order to, uh, to fill the contents of the, um, uh, of the virtual host uh, configuration files. So that's the, uh, the file resource. Uh, source attribute and the content attribute uh, are mutually exclusive, so you cannot use both. You have to choose one of the two. Next up is the, uh, uh, the Concat module. Um, this is a module developed by uh, uh, then uh, community contributor uh, Ari Pinar uh, all the way back in 2010, and uh, later it was adopted by, uh, by Puppet Labs. Um, Ari Pinar uh, uh, created a very nifty uh, uh, module that uh, the, the Concat module allows you to uh, take multiple uh, sections of a file and concatenate them together at the end of your uh, Puppet run. Um, a good example is the puppet.conf uh, file on your Puppet Master. As you might know, it has a main, an agent, and a master section. And those three sections are uh, usually di uh, uh, different from each other. And uh, the order of those three sections doesn't really matter that much. It matters which variable is inside which uh, uh, section. Um, the way it works is it, it, it deploys a local uh, shell script on each agent and uh, concatenates all the fragments that we make uh, together at the end of the Puppet Run. Uh, well, uh, you can uh, look at it if you, uh, if you look at in the, in the Puppet Labs Concat uh, module, if you look at the uh, uh, files directory and then concat fragments.sh, that's the, uh, the script that uh, concatenates everything uh, together smartly. Um, at the end of the webinar, we'll also look at exp exported resources to, uh, uh, to compile a, a, an HA proxy load balancer uh, uh, config file, but it will be at the end of our uh, webinar. Um, an example of the, uh, of the Concat module, uh, each uh, uh, use of the Concat uh, module uh, has uh, two parts. First, uh, we see here at the top of our class, we have a Concat resource. Uh, and then below that we have a concat fragment uh, custom defined. So these two are provided by the concat module. Um, the concat uh, resource itself is uh, for uh, the, uh, uh, the target file. Um, so uh, our, this concat uh, resource defines an etc motd uh, file uh, and sets the owner to owner and group to root and mode to 0644. Then below that, we see two uh, concat fragment uh, uh, resources. Uh, one is the, uh, the header and one is the uh, MOTD local. Uh, both have their target set to $MOTD. Uh, that doesn't point directly to the file, but it points to the title of the, uh, uh, the concat resource that defines the file itself. Um, so uh, in this case, uh, it, it points to the concat resource at the top of the class. Um, 
for uh, the first uh, concat fragment, we set the content, and for the second one, we set the source. They work uh, very similar to uh, normal file uh, resources, uh, except that they also have an order attribute, which is where you can determine which order uh, certain fragments need to appear in uh, when they get concatenated back, uh, back together. Um, it's worth to note the note at the bottom of the screen. It says concat fragment resources for a single target file can appear anywhere in your repository across modules and classes. So they don't need to be in the same class like this example, which means that you can, for instance, compile your, um, your puppet.conf uh, uh, file uh, that has a master and an agent section uh, from your uh, puppet colon colon master class and from your puppet colon colon agent uh, class. Uh, you define the concat fragments in each respective location and then the concat uh, uh, resource itself uh, concatenates them back together to the actual etc puppet labs puppet uh, puppet.conf file. Then uh, next up we have the, uh, the, the file line function that is uh, based in the, uh, in the standard lib uh, module. Uh, standard lib is a, uh, a very commonly used uh, module uh, maintained by Puppet Labs. Uh, I would say that it should be in every Puppet repository and if it's not already there, you should probably uh, uh, download it today. Um, it's implemented as a custom resource type, uh, so you can look inside that module in the lib puppet provider file line ruby.rb uh, uh, file to uh, see how the, the, the custom resource type is, uh, is built if you're interested in that. Um, the file line uh, function is used for, uh, sorry, the file line resource type is used for uh, managing just single lines in a file you otherwise don't care about. So. Um, Let's say that you have your uh, um, uh, a long file with all kinds of options, and none of those are important to you except that one option that uh, that specifies a host name. Uh, you can use then the file line resource uh, to uh, to just manage that one line inside that bigger file, and the file line resource will leave the rest of the file alone. It will just make sure that that one line is uh, uh, present uh, if it's uh, there. Um, one thing to, man to, to mention here, uh, in, in, in my caution uh, note, I mentioned it. Uh, if you manage the same file with both file line and a file resource, then uh, you either get flip-flopping file content or you get unpredictable results. And uh, unfortunately, Puppet doesn't have a, uh, a mechanism to, uh, to see these kind of collisions because they are factually different resource types uh, that just happen to point to the, to the same actual underlying resource. So that's uh, uh, quite a, uh, a problem in larger setups. It can happen that you get flip-flopping uh, content. An example, or actually two examples of the uh, file line uh, resource, I'll just... Uh, uh, go through them. The top one uh, just mentions that in, in the etc sudoers uh, file we need to have a, a line that says uh, sudo uh, give all uh, uh, rights to sudo um, where uh, or to people in the sudo group actually. Um, the second resource uh, uh, actually adds a match parameter which means that uh, if the uh, line uh, mentioned by the match uh, attribute is uh, found, then that's the one that gets replaced with the actual value of the line uh, attribute. So file line is very limited. It's, uh, it's quite rare that you actually only care about one single uh, line in a file, uh, but Etsy sudoers, for instance, could be a, a good example. You can use the same file line resource multiple times for the same target file. Um, because uh, uh, that doesn't matter to Puppet. So you could have, for Etsy sudoers, you could have 10 different file line resources that define all the lines of, uh, of the Etsy sudoers file that you want to uh, have uh, managed. Uh, the fourth option is the anyfile uh, module. It's uh, for a specific subset of files, but I thought I'd mention it anyway because it's, uh, it's quite powerful. Um, it's uh, originally created by Chris Price and uh, now also maintained by, uh, by Puppet Labs. Um, 
contains a few different things, but the most important one is just uh, the any setting uh, resource type, which uh, um, creates a, a setting uh, and automatically creates the, the section as well if the section doesn't already exist. A very simple example, uh, we have a foobaz uh, class with an any setting resource um, where uh, we uh, uh, set the, the file we're managing is the one that is uh, mentioned by the path attribute called temp foo ini. Uh, we're looking for a section called foo and a setting uh, called foo setting that has a value foo. Uh, after I call puppet apply uh, with an include of this class, uh, I can see my temp foo.ini file has a foo section with the foo settings foo uh, um, content. There are some more uh, advanced resource types inside the any file uh, uh, module to customize the behavior a little bit, um, but uh, most common use uh, use case is this uh, simple any setting uh, uh, resource type. The last uh, uh, way to manage files that I wanted to talk about is uh, Augeos. Um, Augeos is a, a very complicated tool. Um, depending on uh, how familiar you are with it, it is either complete bliss or pure hell. Uh, usually it's somewhere in the middle. Uh, it's, a, it's a tool that is de developed separately, not by Puppet Labs. Uh, and it allows you to uh, use what is called a lens uh, file that defines the grammar of a, of a configuration file. So the grammar is mean, that means what does, that, what does the syntax of that configuration file look like. Um, then it, when you point it to a specific configuration file, it uses that lens to parse that configuration file into a, uh, a tree-like format. Uh, after which we can read and write to each node in the tree. We can uh, we can search through the tree, uh, and it becomes super uh, flexible. Uh, the uh, Augeos tool doesn't really care in which order uh, things uh, appear in the uh, um, in our configuration file. Actually, it does, um, but you can uh, insert nodes anywhere in the tree, and they will be uh, uh, created uh, properly inside the uh, configuration file. So the lens is used both for uh, reading in the tree as well as writing out back the configuration file after we modify the, the tree. Um, very advanced uh, tool. Uh, the, uh, uh, it comes with a bunch of lenses for well-known configuration files. Uh, those lenses are well developed and work properly. Uh, so if you're you, trying to manage a config file that is already uh, uh, managed by the stock lenses, uh, by all means uh, go ahead because it's really uh, nice. If you want to create your own lens, it's also possible. The uh, uh, readme is, uh, or the documentation on the site is uh, tough but usable, but it is completely, not complete, it's uh, extremely difficult to create a fully covering lens that uh, manages every single detail and exception case in, uh, in, a, in a config files grammar. I tried once and after two hours I still didn't have more than a few lines and I just uh, gave up and uh, went with one of the other uh, um, management types that we have uh, that we've already talked about. Um, that was years ago though the, the tool has come a long way as well as the stock lenses uh, so I definitely recommend checking those out and seeing if you can uh, you can use them uh, somewhere. In order to use uh, Augeos uh, from Puppet you need the, uh, the Augeos module uh, but it's fairly common and required by a lot of other modules. So if you're using other open source modules, there's a very decent chance that you already have the Augeos uh, uh, module uh, on your uh, Puppet Master. How does this work in practice? Um, I tried uh, keeping the example uh, relatively simple. Um, so we have an etc hosts file on the left um, that has uh, we printed the first uh, 13 lines, including their line numbers on the left-hand side. So the, the line numbers are not in the official uh, file, of course, but that's why I did a cat-n. Um, then on the right, we see a, a number of uh, operations. Uh, first, uh, at the top line, we start augtool. Augtool is a, uh, um, a real-time uh, uh, tool to, uh, uh, to work with uh, files parsed by Augeos. Um, 
the first command, uh, so aug tool is the, the command prompt. And the first command we did was uh, ls uh, dash fi uh, slash files slash etsy host slash seven. What that does is it uh, uh, gives me uh, the uh, um, entries in uh, etsy hosts uh, line number seven uh, parsed into uh, the um, Sorry, not line number seven, host entry number seven. Uh, the comment uh, commented lines on the left, so the first six lines are actually commented out, or they are not actually uh, each Etsy hosts uh, entries. So uh, entry number seven is actually the seventh host entry, which is the line number 13 on the left-hand side. Um, so we can ls that, uh, that entry, and uh, as you see, uh, the lens itself has defined that the IP address uh, uh, that it has three entries basically an IP address, uh, canonical, and an alias, and uh, those three entries are parsed out and printed here. So I can see both the, the name at which we can refer to uh, this um, uh, entry uh, inside each Etsy host uh, line um, as well as its value. Um, oh, I see that there's a, a small duplicate uh, there. Uh, further down, we see match. Uh, files Etsy hosts uh, slash star slash IP address one two three four. Uh, what that does is it searches through the Etsy hosts uh, file, um, and the, the the star there indicates search through all entries on that level, uh, and it searches for the IP address one two three four. And uh, as you see, the the returned entry is the the name of the uh, uh, of the entry in our. Uh, obvious tree that points to that uh, uh, Etsy host uh, entry. So it, it returns files Etsy hosts to slash IP address. And as you see on line eight on the left, which is the second host entry, uh, we actually indeed have that IP address. So that becomes really, uh, really cool if you want to search through a file and you don't know exactly where a certain uh, uh, value is, uh, uh, is written, then this is uh, quite uh, uh, flexible. Uh, one of the other things we can do is print all the IP addresses that are in the uh, in the file. So we say print slash files Etsy hosts slash star slash IP address, and that prints all the uh, IP address entries in the in the file. Um, so that's also uh, uh, an option. There is a, a number of more operations. So match ls. Uh, and print our operations. There's a number of other operations that you can do as well, and I recommend you to just read the documentation and see what you can uh, what you can do there. Um, I didn't go into the uh, the puppet resources for Augeas because uh, they're fairly straightforward. Once you understand how Augeas works and how this uh, file uh, tree system works, uh, then uh, uh, figuring out the uh, the resource type is uh, is fairly trivial. So. That's the, uh, the, the end of the uh, five different ways to manage files. Um, of course, we have a, a, a little uh, trivia question. Uh, what happens in this case? We have a file test.pp that has uh, a class in it, and that class manages two resource types. One is a file temp MOTD, uh, where we set uh, the content to foo uh, uh, and bar, two lines. Uh, whereas the second uh, resource uh, looks for a line uh, in uh, temp MOTD that starts with BA and then has a, a single third character and, match and replaces that with BATS. Um, so the question is, what happens if we do a puppet apply on that, uh, on that file? Will we end up with uh, two lines foo and bar or will we end up with two lines foo and BATS? The entry is uh, unfortunately, uh, or sorry, the answer is unfortunately that we will end up with foo and baz. So what happens is that uh, in this case, Puppet runs through this uh, uh, manifest top to bottom. That's not always the case, but because there is no ordering and we only have two resources, it can just do top to bottom. Um, so first, it creates the temp MOTD file in the first uh, resource and sets the content to foo and bar. Uh, but then the second resource it runs to is file line, which says, hey, replace everything that uh, starts with BA uh, uh, with uh, uh, an entry called BAS. So there's no error message, 
And if you are the author of the uh, uh, temp MOTD file uh, and you're unaware of that file line resource living maybe somewhere completely else in a different module or whatever, uh, there is no way that you can currently tell that your uh, line was actually overwritten, overwritten except by uh, um, searching for uh, the file name and then uh, uh, bumping into this uh, file line resource. It's a, it's a big limitation, uh, so be careful when you uh, uh, use different ways to manage the same uh, uh, on-disk file uh, with different Puppet resources. There, there's no mechanism in Puppet to uh, uh, to tell you that there's going to be a, a resource conflict uh, there. Um, the last uh, part that I wanted to explain is uh, uh, quite a complicated uh, or a, a bit more complicated uh, uh, setup with uh, exported resources um, and the concat uh, um, uh, mechanism. Uh, so when we look at this, uh, this picture, we can see uh, um, we have uh, a file, uh, a server called DB01, where uh, on the bottom right hand side we have a concat uh, resource, which is our, our target file, our, our, the file that we want to concatenate fragments into. Uh, and below that we have the uh, concat fragment collection uh, uh, statement. On the left hand side, we, uh, on a different server, we have a concat fragment uh, titled uh, test. Uh, but its target is set to etc MOTD, which is the same uh, title as the concat fragment on the right, except that we're on two different servers, right? Um, so what we want to do is uh, execute that, uh, that uh, fragment on the left uh, on the DB01 server. Um, in Puppet, there is no direct connection between two uh, different uh, um, uh, servers, so we use something called exported resources, uh, in order to um, uh, go through uh, the Puppet Master. That means that on uh, Web01, when we uh, prefix our concat fragment with a double at sign, it means that it's a, a, an exported resource. That means that it won't, when the Puppet agent runs in step one on Web01, the, uh, the fragment will not be created on Web01. Instead, it will be exported to the Puppet Master. The Puppet Master then stores that whole resource definition inside of PuppetDB uh, and just leaves it there. It says, hey, Web01 exported this uh, uh, concat fragment called test, and uh, this is its uh, uh, attributes, and I'm storing it in PuppetDB. Done. Then it just sits there. The Puppet agent run on Web01 finishes without creating an Etsy MOTD file or anything. It just finishes. Um, until the Puppet agent runs on DB01. Uh, there we create the, the actual concat, the, the um, encompassing concat resource. And uh, below that we have a special uh, syntax uh, where we collect the exported resources. Uh, this syntax, uh, concat colon colon fragment, notice that they both have an uppercase, they start with an uppercase letter. Um, and then the uh, so-called spaceship operator um, which tells the Puppet agent to contact the Puppet Master and collect all exported resources of the type concat colon colon fragment and return them. So the uh, um, uh, Puppet agent connects to the uh, Puppet Master, wh which connects to the PuppetDB, retrieves all the exported uh, resources of the type concat fragment, which includes the one that was exported on Web01 during a previous run on, on Web01. It sends those back to uh, DB01, and the are uh, um, create these resources are created on DB01. So now we have uh, this is how uh, exported resources work in a nutshell. Um, how do we apply that to, uh, um, for instance, an HA proxy uh, configuration, where which is a bit more realistic example. We see here uh, in the top, we see a node uh, web, uh, um, a, re a regular expression that matches any server that has a, a, a web and then three digits dot all in data dot VM in its name. Uh, there we include the class role HA proxy backend. So those are, will be HA proxy backends. And then we have the node proxy 01 dot all in data dot VM, which is going to be uh, just an HA proxy front end uh, uh, server. 
Um, and then we see the implementation of those two uh, uh, role uh, classes. Um, so we have role HA proxy uh, defines the, the encompassing uh, concat uh, resource and uh, um, uh, gathers the exported resources of the type concat fragment. That if the first Puppet agent run on pro on proxy zero one happens before it happens on any of the web servers. This will not return anything because the puppet DB doesn't contain any exported resources yet. However, once it runs on any of our web servers, we will uh, export on those web servers a, a concat fragment uh, with uh, the target set to Etsy, Etsy HA proxy dot CFG, and obviously it will have either a source or a content. Uh, uh, attribute that we uh, use to define the contents of this uh, of this section of the uh, HA proxy config file. Um, however, it doesn't create that uh, concat fragment on the web server. It just exports it into the Puppet DB, and then once the Puppet agent runs on proxy zero one, we uh, get again execute this uh, concat fragment uh, collection uh, uh, statement that collects all the exported resources and now it will see that fragment that came from web01 and add that fragment to our ha proxy config file that means that uh, as we uh, add web servers uh, to our infrastructure automatically after the first puppet run they will uh, um, export their uh, section of the HA proxy config file that goes on the proxy uh, server. And the next time the uh, Puppet agent run uh, happens on the proxy server, it will actually create an extra entry into the HA proxy uh, config file. It's a very powerful uh, uh, mechanism that can be used not only for HA proxy configs, uh, but also for uh, other stuff like, for instance, Nagios uh, checks. But here it's uh, done in the uh, context of the uh, of the Comcat module. That uh, concludes my uh, uh, my section about uh, files. Uh, I just wanted to mention uh, our upcoming uh, trainings. We have uh, in in Europe only two more trainings in uh, in 2014. Uh, uh, one is uh, November 17th in Vienna, and the other one is November 24th in Barcelona. Uh, then we have uh, two more trainings in India and one more training in, uh, in Singapore. Uh, we have a fundamentals training in Hyderabad and one in Pune on November 24th and December 1st and a uh, uh, architect training in December uh, in, uh, in Singapore. Um, lastly, we are hiring uh, if you're based in the EU or in Asia. We are very interested to talk to you if you know Puppet Inside Out and would like to uh, tell uh, other users how to use it. Um, it's a job that involves a lot of travel and a lot of uh, fun. We're a very uh, uh, nice uh, team to work with, so uh, uh, feel free to uh, send in your resume. Um, and lastly, uh, questions uh, that we can uh, look at. Um, if you uh, uh, are watching this uh, webinar, uh, the recording of this webinar, then uh, you can send your uh, um, your questions, either uh, tweet them to Walter Hack or Olin Data uh, Twitter handles, or write me directly on walterhack at olindata.com is my email address, and I'll make sure to, uh, to get back to you with a reasonable answer. Um, that concludes uh, that. Let's go move on to the questions.